Hello, everybody. We are live and uh, welcome to another edition of Skip Happen. Skip Clark, 92.1 The Wolf here in Syracuse. And of course, my good friend, the founder and uh, the young lady that runs the official country music fan club and spends a lot of time Hi. in Nashville, Deb Lamb here. And uh, I, I am very excited about tonight's guests. Uh, we got Zach and Rodney who have a brand new song on the wolf. And uh, as a matter of fact, it's being played on a lot of radio stations uh, called Selma Swamp. And it's along with that guy right to the right. Well, my right, it might be your, no, it would be your right if you're looking at your screen because that's what I'm mm -hmm. doing. Mr. Canton Jones. And what an mm -hmm. honor to have you guys with us here tonight. Wow, welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for joining you. us tonight. Well, the honor mm -hmm. is all ours for sure. Thanks, Deb and Skip, for sure. Absolutely. First of all, and, and I asked this of all of our guests, um, Zach and Rodney, des describe your surroundings right now. Where are you? And uh, just tell us all about it. Yeah, we're actually um, in our hometown right now in uh, Trinity, uh, North Carolina. I mm -hmm. guess you could say this is the Where official office of, of Zach and Rodney. And so we are, uh, we are live from the office right now in Trinity, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's one of the hot spots though, right? With this quarantine thing or everything. That's yeah. Going you know, unfortunately, um, our County right now is, uh, definitely, uh, highlighted in blue, which is in dark blue, which is not yeah. the color that you want to see. Right. Exactly. We're lucky enough to be in New York, all fingers are crossed. And, uh, what started out as the, uh, I guess a while ago was the epicenter. Now we're completely the opposite. So right. thank you, good Lord at this point that uh, we're doing okay. But, uh, for example, I travel to the Outer Banks every year. We, mm -hmm. we vacay in the Outer Banks, but uh, I don't know how that's going to go this year. We're supposed to go in September. I think if I go, then when I come back, I need to quarantine for 14 days. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So, yeah. yeah, probably a good idea for sure. Yeah. Also with us, as I mentioned in the beginning, Deb and everybody else, uh, Canton Jones, uh, get this, 2012 Grammy nominee, Stellar Award nomination, three Gospel Choice Awards. He's a trailblazer in media and entertainment, uh, got an award for that. Uh, he's worked with McDonald's, The Gift Tour, Chick-fil-A, Trumpet Awards, Gospel Music Channel, Walmart. I can go on and on, on and on with that. He also has a keys, the keys to a city. Now, that is pretty cool. I'm sure that's hanging on the wall somewhere. Uh, to Carlton, or it's Carrollton, Georgia, right? Carrollton, is that how you say it, Canton? It is. Are you there, brother? Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Very cool. Okay. Also, uh, you do, you're a minister. You do a lot of preaching to the youth and about uh, life and about drugs and about uh, doing the right thing. So, and it's such an honor to have you on here. And also, I'm sure you know it's got to be just with Zach and Rodney and and you, um, Canton, just getting together and doing that song. Can somebody tell us how all that came down? Uh, go ahead, Canton. Well, you, you uh, want to take it off? Well, uh, I'll kick it off and you can kind of catch up, uh, uh, kind of do the tail end of it. We we were doing a uh, kind of like a youth summit. Um, uh, 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 a young lady reached out to me and wanted me to do something for the kids. Uh, we were actually in Charlotte. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and so my wife usually does my booking. This is one of the ones that I did via text. So I didn't have a lot of information. <laughs> My wife tells me not to do that, but this, this time, a friend of mine, I did it, and I showed up, and I actually didn't have a lot of details, and so the kids came in, and I didn't, I didn't know until after the event that they were troubled youth. I just thought it was a regular youth group. Honestly, I thought they were because there were so many pastors in the room. I thought it was a church group, um, and um, and so I saw Rodney early on. Um, he was one of the sponsors with a. Uh, uh, his company, and uh, we just started talking. We said he did music, and I, I was like, well, I do music, but I do, you know, gospel, some hip-hop, some R&B, and he was telling me that he did uh, country music, and I was like, okay, that's cool, you know, and so he saw our performance, saw what we did with the youth, and later on, we hooked up, and mm -hmm. so he said, you know, remember that time where you, because I'm, I'm a producer, I love all types of music, Wow. And he okay. said, remember that time you told me that you would take a swing at a country song? <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. There you go. Um, yeah. It was the first time for everything. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> the song was so awesome. Uh, it had deep. The lyrics were awesome. The melody was great. And uh, they gave me an opportunity to do my thing. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. We got together. 
uh, put the video together. Uh, it was freezing out there. <laughs> but uh, we had a great time. We had an awesome time. And so to be honest, we did the, uh, the, the record maybe like a year ago, maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. It seems like right now was such a relevant time to release the song. And so that's how we ended up doing it. And I know there are more details. Go ahead, Rodney, Zach, y'all jump yeah. in. <laughs> no, great, and, and, and that's really a, a very nice summary of how that um, happened. Uh, just like you said, you know, we were invited to go and to try to pour into, just like Canton does, just to pour into uh, people to try to help them. And um, I didn't, much like Canton, I didn't really know uh, who we would be meeting with. But when we got down there, you know, when I saw the police officers and things like that, Wow. You know, we, we recognized that everybody that we were meeting with, and I was at a round table and I guess there was about eight or nine uh, people sitting down there with me and almost every single one of them, you know, well, all, all the people that were there that were escorted in by the police had all been arrested. Wow. And, and, and were already under arrest, awaiting trial and things like that. And that's how Canton Jones and, and we met. Very cool. really where this this birth, you know, the song had already been written before we met. The mm -hmm. song had been written about four years ago. Um, and uh, but then Canton and I met and just, um, you know, God took it from there. Exactly. You know, you know, stranger, we usually talk to a lot of the, the newer artists, but in reality is neither one of you or Canton our new artist you've been doing the christian music thing for a good number of years you've got albums out there uh you've had your songs played on christian radio and canton of course being you know the hip-hop artist and then being a a, a pastor and being doing all that and the music is gospel and all that so you guys are no stranger to the music thing but you're doing a country song now which is it's like why and how i mean you already went through it a little bit but it's a whole new feel for you guys correct yeah, definitely for me. Um, but I, I loved it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, this is it's a movie called Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. There's the scene where they're singing, I am a man of constant sorrow. I love that song. So I was like, if I ever get a chance to do a song with that groove, Lord, let it happen. And, and this song has that feel to it, you know? And it's such a it's such a big song, it's bigger than me, it's bigger than anything that I've ever done because the meaning of it is just about so many other people, people that came before us, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. movements that came before us. And so I'm so honored to kind of be a small piece. A lot of times you're writing from your heart and your issues and the things that you deal with personally, mm -hmm. but this song is about history, about American history, about black American history, about so many things that happen and so uh, it's so bigger than me and i just feel so sm not small but honored to be on a song with such potential man and i thank my brothers for reaching out to me to do it absolutely the um there was it is a big part of history black history uh because the, the walk from selma to was it was Scott, but there you go that's that's yeah. huge that's huge and uh of course we just lost a very special pe person that uh played a big role in that so yeah, Got yeah. It. so, so. so we, yeah. We're, 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 we're grateful and mm -hmm. uh i'm humbled by this song man i know i know zach doesn't talk a lot but <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get him to talk a lot tonight <laughs> We're just starting here, my friend. We are just starting. We're just at the tip of it. We're just on the surface. Wait till we go a little bit deeper. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions to Zach? No. Put it no. on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach, where are you from originally? Uh, from Trinity, North Carolina. Okay, so you're right there. Yeah. You're right there. That's cool. That's cool. But how often do you guys get to Nashville, Zach? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, not much this year, but uh, no. Um, uh, we usually try to go at least probably three or four times mm -hmm. a year. Very cool. Have you um, been able to perform in Nashville with the Christian music side of things? Because uh, Christian and country go very well together. Yeah, and, we, uh, we we performed a couple times actually. Okay. Hard rock. So that was one of the cool. Yeah, we uh, we did the Opry River yeah. Hall one time. Yep. Oh. Yeah. How did I miss that? Yeah. Yep. I don't know. 
I don't Hard Rock was a really cool. That was a really cool event. Downtown Nashville to mm-hmm. get to play there. That was a. We had a bunch of Christian country artists there with us, and man, that was a. That was a really awesome time. So you know, back whenever we could uh, travel a whole lot more, we we mm-hmm. definitely spent. We've definitely spent quite a bit of time in Nashville. That's for sure. That's for yeah, sure. We probably ran across each other. We just didn't know it. Yeah, yeah. probably. A couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Do you um do you perform at CMA Fest at all? We have never done that before. You know, this is actually our very first song that we've. Now we've had songs that have gotten picked up that mm-hmm. have been played on regular country radio, but we've never officially um, put anything out to country radio as a country single. This is Selma Swamp is the first time we've ever done that. And uh, so to answer your question, um, we have not, but we would be honored to. Well, I think they, if I remember correctly, I think they started blending in some Christian artists into the fold. So I was just curious because I never seem to make it everywhere because it's such a huge event. So um, there's a lot of exposure at that event for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We would certainly love to do that sometime. That's for sure. That would be awesome. That would be and then awesome. a good word for you. We got to work on that. <laughs> I'd appreciate it because Ken's been talking about it. We have got to get on stage and do this song live. Mm-hmm. Yes, oh gosh, all of yes. you. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, does Kent? Do you try to make all their live shows when they, you know, they're going to sing that song, or you haven't had that opportunity yet? Or yeah, we we we're just releasing the song, and yeah. so, uh, but I'm I'm game, uh, especially. Uh, you know, I know COVID's got to, you know, mm-hmm. got to get past that. You know, my prayers are f- with with mm-hmm. family that are mm-hmm. going through that, and I know we have to go through that. Uh, but after that, man, let's let's go. I, I'm even <laughs> just in case I have to sing one more song. I got to work on a country EP, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. Yes, sir. Idea. You know, and so, uh, but I'm but I'm looking forward to traveling. I, I really want to do the song live. And just that, that energy, you know, is going to be amazing. I can't wait. Can we um, back it up just a little bit? When you said, when you two first, when all of you first met and you went to the, uh, and you met all the kids that had been arrested and, you know, there were troubled youth. I mean, why were you guys there to speak to these kids? Is that what was going on or how did all that, why were you there? Well, my, uh, my company uh, that, that I work with, I've uh, been with them for a number of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, my director reached out to me and, and said, hey, we're doing this United Way event. And um, and I want you to, to put a suit on and I'm coming to pick you up in two hours. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what are we doing? And he says, just we're going to go and minister to some folks. And I said, OK. Nice. And uh, and uh, and so he comes, picks me up and takes me down there. And he still hadn't really told me, you know, who I'm going to be speaking with and what have you. But, you know, when we sat at that table, I mean, I, I'm talking to, you know, hardcore, you know, gang members and mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. like that. And uh, it was it was uncomfortable, obviously, because, you know, um, I was out of my comfort zone. Sure. And, mm-hmm. But yet it was an extremely rewarding time because, you know, just to have the opportunity to, to even just have one person that would open up to me enough to allow me to put my hand on his shoulder and pray over him, mm-hmm. you know, you know, money can't buy that. No. And, and that was, that was worth the trip to be able to, to have that moment for sure. Mm-hmm. And you did the same thing, Canton. You were talking to the youth and. Uh... Um, yeah. I, I was brought in to, to actually perform for them. Oh, nice. So uh, the dynamics of the room where you have, I believe it was some police officers there. Mm-hmm. It had to be because we had kids. Sure. That were mm-hmm. So, But I, I didn't know that dynamic until afterwards. But all, you know, you had kids sitting on one side. Then you had city officials, businessmen, pastors sitting on the other side. And I, and I was like the meat in the middle of the sandwich. Mm-hmm. And so I, <laughs> sing, yeah. I start singing. Um, mm-hmm. We ended up having a party at the end of the uh, uh, of the event where the kids were actually dancing with some of the adults in the room. Nice. Uh, and, and it was it was it was very very cool to see that. And and then we did have a chance to pray with the kids. Mm-hmm. Had a chance of intimacy where they could just settle down and, and reflect a little. And uh, it, so it was it was awesome. It was awesome. And it's always awesome to see kids who may be aggressive 
on the outside, but mm-hmm. have so many things going on on the inside, on the inside that, yeah. that sometimes, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter how you get in. It's just the fact that you can get in, whether it's through prayer, music, yeah. or just simply talking to them and listening to them. And so we had a chance to do that that day. You know, you got prayer, but I th- prayer does very good, but um, music does just as well. Yeah. And if you can connect through your music, uh, Zach and Rodney, and you can't, and I think you've you've accomplished something. And you've got those kids thinking, and hopefully when they left there or they're back out onto the street, they think about what you guys have, have shown them and uh, prayed for, and hopefully they've gone down that right path, which is which would be the right thing to do, obviously. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's, um, let's uh, talk about how long have you actually been playing music, Zach and Rodney, as a duo? We've actually, uh, since Zach was like 12 years old, and uh, I guess probably, you know, for me when I was about the, uh, I started writing poetry for me like in third grade. And um, and then when I grabbed a guitar, you know, uh, in my teenage years, I was like, hey, and I didn't even know this was songwriting. I was like, what if I put music to one of my poems, you know, and then, and then, you know, so goes songwriting. And, uh, and then, Later on, um, uh, me and a buddy got together and we'd done some stuff in, in Nashville. And and uh, and then I decided to pursue more gospel music for a good bit. And, and that's what I've been doing for a long time. And I sang with my mother and uh, and some of her family members. We actually had a quartet, a gospel quartet. Oh, wow. OK. And at the age of 12 years old, Zach was the lead guitar player. Wow. And and so, yeah, we started playing. And then on the side, Zach and I was like, man, what's I've been I was like, Zach, I've been writing this more country stuff that the quartet can't quite do. What about me and you doing this? And so we did. And so back in 2005, we started releasing stuff and we were very honored to have, um, you know, our, our very first single ever released to gospel radio was a national charting song. And we've had mm-hmm. numerous, you know, uh, you know, since then. So we've been together for my goodness, since he was 12 years old, but that's wow. me stopping short of telling you how old he is today. <laughs> how, how, how far apart are you guys in age? How far apart are you guys in age? You know how old I am, Zach. I'm going to put you on the spot there. I don't know if I do know how old you are. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're 10 years apart. <laughs> 10 years oh, apart. Right. Right. That's not too bad. That's no, not too bad. Well, good. I, I read that you had married his sister, I believe, right? Yeah, and no, that's a piece we, we got to hit on real quick. Um, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> if it's not too soon to go there. Kenton's taking nope. this in, by the way. He's like, really? Okay. And like, I don't know about this, man. It's like, <laughs> yeah. You see no. my in the back. You know, <laughs> my son, that's my wife in the back. So, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, so, so here, here, here's the very short thing of how we did come together. Um, the, the other piece of that. And that is, I have not always lived a trouble-free life. I, yes, I was going to ask you about that. And, uh, and so I, I got in trouble with the law mm-hmm. and um, a judge showed me a lot of mercy and, and, and gave me community service. Mm-hmm. And he, and he told several of the people that I was with in the courtroom that day, what where they could do their community service but when he looked at me he named off several different places but when he looked at me and he said and young man you can do yours at a church Mm -hmm. and so i called up the church i called the janitor of the church that i grew up in and i said i've gotten in trouble with the law i've got to do community service can i help you clean the church and he said one condition and i said okay what's that and he said you have to attend my sunday school class one time one time, okay. I said that's a deal. Okay. So the truth is that I I've never quit going. Wow. I attended that one time in that same church where I did my community service is where I met God. That same Sunday school class that I attended, I wound up teaching, wow. and I was also ordained to preach out of that church, and I wound up marrying the janitor's daughter. Wow. It just so happened to have a brother that played the guitar and sang like crazy named Zach. He doesn't talk. He must sing. 
He sings and plays, but he does not talk. <laughs> I, I think that's a phenomenal story. Yes, absolutely. And that's, that's a story for everybody to hear. Uh, mm -hmm. You went down the wrong road. You were told to do something. You met God. And then you were, you're going in the right direction. You, you've never looked back. That's it. Yeah. I, I, I always say sometimes it just takes that. It's that one thing that you wake up one day and you're in one spot. The next day something happens, you're in a different spot and your whole life has changed. A whole new chapter is written. And in your case, it was a huge blessing and benefit for your future. I, I mean, that's just, and, and a lot of other people's future, not just yours. Yeah, it helped a lot of other people. So. Yes. Very well, yeah. You were able to share that with so many and uh, touch so many with that story, which is great. Now your music's touching a lot of people. And of course, Canton's music has been uh, touching a lot of people for a lot of years, not you know his gospel and his uh, ministries and all that. It's just it's just amazing. Um, how many albums do you have, Canton? <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, can you just give us a number? Or is that I know there's a lot. I was looking at the bio. Yeah, we I do mixtapes and I do uh, yep. compilations as well. So, uh, excluding excluding those, I probably have maybe seven personal uh, uh, project. Nice. But we count mixtapes and uh, compilations and features. I, I, I don't know. I, my Music for me is uh, a profession, but it was a hobby first, and it's still a hobby. So when I'm watching TV, I'm just doodling in the studio and just making music because it relaxes me. And so um, I, I always like to, to explore different things. And so now this song is like out of my box mm -hmm. a long ways, but I've ex now I'm a country, I, I'm officially <laughs> a country artist, bro. Like, I, <laughs> I, you know, and, 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 you know and, and they made it so easy for me. Like, mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't sound weird and forced, you know, it, it they just, no, uh, you fit right in, man. I, you know, watching and listening to the video, it's you fit right in. It's just, it's like I thought you were just a member of these, you know, Zach and Rondi, and you were part of the band. I said, this guy's good. I mean, they're all yeah. good. It's a great song. Zach, Rondi, and Ken. Yes, 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 I love it. I love it. I love it. But uh, remember, you remember Cowboy Troy? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. He was uh, quite the character. I had a couple of opportunities to hang with him at uh, Big and Rich's or uh, Rich. Um, Oh gosh, up up on Mount Richmore. Um, nah, I just had a brain fart. Can't think. Are you talking about big, big and rich the, yes. the duo? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know you're I, about. yeah. Why am I drawing a blank too? That's awful. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah. yeah, it was crazy. Cowboy Troy was up there one night. We were at CRS, and I tell you, that guy likes to have a good time. And uh, <laughs> and you know his what they call hick hop, and uh, you know he just gets into it, and it's just amazing, amazing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys could do your own thing on one uh, respect, and then in the country genre, you come together and you are a union, and we'll we'll market you that way. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I see a lot of music coming out of these three. Yeah, I got a lot of ideas, Miss Deb. I have a lot. Of <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think Kenton might want to put us on a hip hop song, maybe. Yes, it's coming soon. Trust. <laughs> me. I can't. I can't wait to go. This one thing I love about this podcast because I've met so many awesome artists. I can't wait to go back and listen to some of your music, Canton, because your resume is huge, huge. And, and, it's just I'm, and I'm all over the place. Like, it depends on which project. I'll mm -hmm. rap, and then I'll be singing a ballad. I'll be singing a worship song. So That's what blows my mind. Just, you love it all. I'm just kind of different. I, I grew up like, uh, like Zach, mm -hmm. quartet. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I was a quartet singer. I'm from originally from uh, Deerfield Beach, Florida, which is okay. a little uh, uh, north of Miami. And so my dad had a quartet group too, you know. Um, and so I, I've always been singing and singing in the choir. I ended up coming to Atlanta, you know, and I went to Morehouse College and sang in the Morehouse College Glee Club. And so mm -hmm. I, I was a Glee Club singer. Like, so there's nothing on my resume that says rap. <laughs> you know, why I started doing rap is because when I uh, started working with the church, the kids wanted more rap music. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing the music for them, you know, doing chants. And I 
end up doing it at some conventions and everybody said, okay, I want more of what you did there. I want, I don't want the other stuff. Do that, you know? And so that's how it happened. So is it uh, a Christian rap, so to speak? Right, that right, you, right. You, okay. Yeah. Have, you, um, have you ever been to NCYC, the NCYC conference by any chance? No, it's I the National Catholic Youth Conference. I have. Um, I would love uh, to go. Did you, you, that is a place for you. I, 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 uh, so our church has done that forever. So my husband has been a chaperone forever. I had the opportunity to go once with one of my daughters. And it's, it's so music oriented and the youth are so involved. And I am just, I, it's an amazing, uplifting spiritual experience. And folks like yourself and prof very professional artists are out there with their music and passing their message on to the youth. And you would just be a perfect fit for that. I have to somehow get that word out to someone yeah. because I'm you would love it. You I'm would love it. Well, both you all would love it. I shouldn't say just you, you all would love it. You would fit in beautifully. Yeah, it's absolutely. just a absolutely. wonderful, wonderful event for the youth and uh, the Christian world. So, yeah. and you could probably throw your country song in there and they'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and so, by the way, by, I, you would, you mentioned uh, checking out some of Canton's music. I have downloaded tons of his music. I listen to it. I stream it. I work out with it. I sing it, I believe it or not. And sometimes Canton Jones, he'll pick up the phone and I'll be singing one of his things. And <laughs> You're and answering the phone. Really, really want to do it, you know? <laughs> I love it. You guys have really bonded all, over all this. this oh, yeah. The moment Man. we first met, you know, mm -hmm. coming together and putting that song out, and now you're like uh, best buddies, which is cool. Really? I love my brother, man. I love his whole family. I've met his wife and awesome. some of his awesome. precious friends, man. They're just awesome people. Yeah, yeah man. Likewise, bro. And, and we had a uh, an awesome time shooting the video. I was going to ask. Okay. We, we was all in this, this house, this, like a cabin type house. Brothers had a sleepover. Yeah, uh, eating sandwiches and <laughs> having a good time shooting the video, and, and and that was time for us to bond and kind of talk about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where God brought us from, and you know, sure. our families and everything. And so, uh, it was it's so good, and, you know. And when we started meeting, I felt like the song was so natural. By the time we had spent so much time together, the song was just so natural. It just came off to be so natural. And nothing forced, uh, you know. When you're music, right, you right. Want it all to be genuine, you want it all to feel good, and that was one of the things that I was nervous about. Well, is it gonna sound genuine to the genre? And you know, and and, and so I, I'm just grateful that they picked me to be a part of that. Yeah, well, it definitely sounds natural. You've done a great job with that. Um, what is it, Kent? How does your family feel about uh, you know when they heard you were doing a country song? Were they like, what? Oh, my wife knows that I'm outside of the box. That's outside the box. So she, she, you know, she did. We've done uh, spiritual. She sang opera, Latin, uh, different languages. Uh, so we're we like different types of music. She's a jazz singer as well. So we like different types of music. I, mm -hmm. I, I feel like God made all types of music, and we should enjoy all types of music. Absolutely. And so it wasn't a surprise to her. Now, it may be a surprise to some of my fans that I did it, but when they look at the quality of, of the music and the story behind, uh, in the video, they love it. They really do. Ken, I, I don't know if I asked you, where are you right now? I'm in I'm in McDonough, Georgia, which is outside of Public yeah. County, south of Atlanta. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. Are you a baseball fan at all or anything like that? You go uh, to the Braves? I'm, I'm still all Florida when it comes to sports, unfortunately. Uh, Dolphins. Uh, but, no, please. Do we have to talk about the Dolphins? Uh, <laughs> Dolphin fan, Miami Heat, you know. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went with the Marlins, but I, I, I try to stay with the home team. Uh, yeah. You know, Hurricanes, of course. You know, uh, you know, I see uh, Sir, Syracuse. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you knew you that know. was gonna come up. So, so you know, I, I, you know, I, I have to. I'm not with Georgia sports yet, and I've been here over 20 years. Yeah, yeah, not yet. It's crazy, and there's Zach sitting over there just smiling. I know. Uh, I know. Zach it's, needs a question, Skip. I'm, no. thinking, I'm trying to think of one. What was? Uh -huh. uh, I don't know. I don't know. Are you guys, uh, Zach and Rodney? You guys follow any sports at all? <laughs> 
Um, Zach, we do. Uh, we're kind of we're kind of hometown fans too, I guess you could say. Uh, yeah. Carolina Panthers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, always been a Braves fan my whole life. Atlanta Braves. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. That's cool. We're big uh, Nationals and uh, Mets here because um, our Triple A team, of course, they were the Met, uh, they were the Nationals up to about a year ago. That was their parent team, and now it's the New York Mets. So, yeah, and we've been season ticket holders forever, and we support them, so it's cool. Yeah. Very cool. As a matter of fact, they always have the baseball right here. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're a big fan. <laughs> oh, well, a little bit. That's why I always like to ask. I'd like to know a little bit. Uh, we go a little bit deeper when we talk to the artists to find out more about them, you know, what their hobbies are, what kind of sports you, you enjoy. I mean, what do you do just for fun? And the big question, I guess, right now would be this whole quarantine thing. It's been going on for so long. And how have you guys handled all that? It's been, um, you know, it's it's been a challenge for sure. And mm -hmm. it's been a, uh, a life-changing event for for everybody and uh but obviously thank god for technology because we've done a tremendous amount of zoom meetings and a lot of interviews over the phone and things like that and um it's also allowed a time to kind of hit the pause button to spend a lot of extra time with the wife the kids mm -hmm. that you know as you go out and tour and hit the road very heavy a lot of times you miss a lot of stuff and it's been great um, just to kind of hit the pause button a little bit and really spend a lot, a lot of awesome quality time with uh, with my wife and and, and kids. Uh -oh. and that's what we've been doing a lot of for sure. Uh oh, we lost uh, we lost Canton. Uh oh, he'll be back when he comes back. Uh, we'll get him back on. But mm -hmm. so that yeah, I, you know, I have to agree with you there. You know, we this whole quarantine thing has been like. It's a, it's a new reality, and there's a bad side, but the good side is basically what you guys were just saying, the fact that uh, we're able to reestablish those relationships or at least get a little bit closer. Maybe some of the things that we've lost in life, you can rebuild those. Again, you've got time. You said you're spending it with the family. Uh, you know, it's the same thing here. I used to be, you know, I'd be working every weekend, doing my gigs and stuff like that, and now it's, it's like the weekend. It's like, what are we going to do? I'm with the wife. I got my son, and... Uh, you know, it, it's nice to be able to, you know, just get back into the family life a little bit deeper. So, yeah. listen, if you're looking for a list of some things to do, I have a lot of like my garage needs to be cleaned and we got some hey, weeds that need to be cut. Be careful what you ask for. Here comes Canton. Canton's coming back. No, <laughs> I've learned how to hang clothes in the closet, I've learned how to do wash. Yeah. Uh, I've been binge watching some shows. I yeah. mean, you know, have you guys been binge watching anything? Have you um, anything that you watch or no? Yes. Yeah, even, uh, yeah. Not recently. I haven't really been, been watching anything. No. Yeah, I, I watch stuff. You know, um, my wife turned me on to something, uh, some series, some kind of beach show or something not too long ago. And that's my first time ever binge watching anything. And that was pretty that was pretty wild. We still got a few more episodes of something Outer Banks or something that might have been the name of the show. Outer Banks. Yep. yep. Yeah. And so we binge watched that. And that was my first time ever binge watching. Everybody always talked about it. And I was like, well, there's a quarantine. So there's no time like now mm -hmm. to binge watch. But I've also watched a ton of sermons, different, you know, people. Oh, yeah. ask that. About that if you did that. Okay. Yeah. I've watched, uh, I've probably taken in more sermons since the quarantine than I normally would during a, during a normal week. Is there a particular person that you listen to? Man, you know, there, there's a lot of different folks that um, I enjoy. There's a lot of hometown people that I like to watch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Tyler Galden is one that's local that, that I've enjoyed watching uh, locally, but just, you know, I just flip through and I just, I, I listen to a clip of them. Much like somebody's gonna listen to a song to see if they're gonna like it, right? Right, and I start listening to it, and, and bam, there it is. And not just because Kenton Jones is on here, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll sit through and I'll hear a lot of stuff. Kenton, turn your uh, you gotta turn yours down a little bit. Whoever just came back on, I think it's you, Kenton. Can you hear me? Yeah. There. All right, I think yeah. you got it now. I think you uh, got it. Kenton, uh, Kenton's leave and come back, leave it. He must have had to take the dog out or something. Uh, I don't. Uh, know. No, no, my, my computer is. Jealous, I guess. It, it might be. It might be. It could yeah. be. Can you hear me? No worries. Canton? 
Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, Roger. Okay. Good. All right. We're back in business. Back right. in business. I love it. I love it. Uh, so I'm trying to think, uh, what about your songwriting here a little bit? Uh, Zach, Rodney, you guys must sit down and get a chance and you guys get together and write. Do you get with other people or do you do it via Zoom? Uh, how is all that working for you? Yeah, you know, we've done a, a lot of songwriting and that's, that's one of my favorite things to do for sure. And uh, that's actually kind of how uh, another piece of how Sound the Swamp came, came to be is a co-worker of mine who didn't write a lot of songs, you know, he grew up in Alabama and this Selma Swamp story uh, is kind of a, based upon a true story that happened to him where he grew up in Alabama, he pulls up and he begins to talk to the, the gentleman there in, in overalls. Mm -hmm. And so, and he, and so he, he takes me out to lunch and he tells me this story about that life event for him. And uh, he says, man, I, I've heard you wrote songs. Could you help me, you know, do something with this. And so I was, you know, the whole Nashville story where you're writing stuff down on napkins and stuff mm -hmm. like that over lunch. I mean, it was true. And then I went back and I really began to study the history uh, of Selma and, and everything that happened and what have you. And uh, mm -hmm. it was very, very moving for me to, to learn a lot of the history of it that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, and then the song began to be be born. But, yeah, we've written with a lot of different folks. I mean, some of our highlights would be with Jerry Sally. You know, he's had cuts with Chris yeah. Stapleton and yeah, absolutely. Uh, a ton of other folks. You know, we've written with uh, Martin Almore, who wrote uh, That's What I Love About Sundays. We've wrote with him a bunch. He's had a lot of cuts with Josh Turner. Yes. Um, James Elliott, you know, he's the uh, songwriting instructor over there at uh, Belmont. And we've actually got to sit in uh, with a, a class being taught by Tom Douglas, who wrote oh, The wow. Help Built Me. Mm -hmm. we've, um, I've been on the phone with Alan Shamlin before, and he's kind of poured into us. You know, he's the other writer of The House That Built Me. So, yeah, we've done a ton of stuff, a lot of writing down through the years. That's where we've spent a lot of time in in Nashville, and we absolutely just love writing. Zach and I write together. Zach is incredible on melody. He's, cre he's incredible on just these ideas of music to kind of help it all come to life. And so, yeah, we definitely get together. A lot of times, Zach could be playing a riff on the guitar. I'm like, man, I got some lyrics for that, you know? Or I'll share some lyrics, and he's like, what about something like this? So, yeah, we love it. Absolutely love to do that. See, Zach is thinking about it right now. Yeah, right. you can see it. He's, you know, he's, got it. he's got it going. He's thinking about the next one. He's thinking about the next line. What about you, Ken, about writing songs or writing your music? Or My process is, is weird. I, I, um, I'm a producer, but I don't really fluently play. So we I have uh, music, like MIDI production elements. Sure, you sure. Know? And so I build tracks. A, a lot of my music I, I make myself with samples and, and maybe bring in some live musicians to put, I, I kind of can put it together. Right. Right. Um, but I don't have a, a process per se. Sometimes gotcha. it comes from a song. Sometimes it comes from something that God downloaded in my spirit to just sing. Sometimes I'm inspired by, by something that I saw on, on TV, you mm -hmm. know, in, in anything, you know, sometimes it's something that that's really in my life that I'm, um, you know, just trying to write out. I, I use music also as a process to just kind of get certain things out. And so sometimes my wife says, let's not put that one out. <laughs> 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 just, uh -huh. just because of the vent process of certain things, you know, but I, I kind of use it as that. And so yeah. I've, I've always, um, um, my wife has always written music with me. She's all, she's a vocalist. She's always nice. in my music. And so uh, for over the years, you know, our sound together has been the sound. She's always been the back background person. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a, a self-proclaimed introvert. And so, you know, with that, she always colors my music. You know, if there's mm -hmm. any female that's in my songs, doing uh you know background it's my wife that's and so, awesome and so um my, and my pro but but what i want to do I, what i love about what zach and rodney uh is talking about i've always wanted to have writing sessions with other people you know and just sit down and make music and 
and and and and kind of come up with other ideas. This is why this project is so special because it's people from two different cultures, two different mm -hmm. uh, experiences, and came up different, but came together to make such a powerful song. And I was like, man, this is this is the type of feeling that I want to have after making a song, you know, that is bigger than me, you know. And so and so I've learned a lot through this process. I have. I I I I don't think I'm good on country yet, bro. I'm, I'm working on. It. <laughs> I don't know. You do pretty good. I like it. I like it. I love it. I need some licks here and there, Zach, but uh, but I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You know, it's for everybody. Country is for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. It, it, it That doesn't matter at all. And, and what you're doing, Kent, is like the creative side. Not that writing isn't creative. It is. It takes a lot to write a good song. I get that. But, Kent, on your side, that's the other side of it, the creativity of putting all this together. Maybe you're working with Pro Tools or you're working right. with another great, you know, system i'm not sure what you use but uh, pro tools is pretty awesome for bringing it all together and yeah. you can sample something and you can take it out I, I mean i play with it too so that that oh, really? <laughs> yeah. well i have a full studio so i have pro tools and i use uh, i use that and i use um audition i i have everything so i have all the toys and i love it i love it so well, Fred, well hey I you need to produce me something. <laughs> you know what? I don't think there's any competition because you'd kick my ass in that category. <laughs> I'm sure you can do very, very, very well at it. So I love it. I love that's okay. It. We'll try. That's good. That's good. So you do the creative side, of course, mixing it down and doing what you do. Of course, Zach and Rodney uh, getting involved in the songwriting. And uh, like I say, I'm looking at Zach right now, and I can just tell he's got those gears turning, thinking of oh, the, yeah. next, the next rift or the the next song. Or something so that's pretty cool that's pretty cool so so let me let me ask you zach you're oh. so quiet on the home front here how do you feel when you get on stage how did you even start to perform in front of an audience when i'm not saying that you're shy but you're just very very you know quiet reserved and you got to get out there and sing in front of people you know like when you get on the stage like you almost become a different person like yes. you know like the crowd does not bother me. Like the more people, the better for me. It's weird. It's kind of weird, but that is weird. But I am like a shy introvert. <laughs> wife, you know, but I don't know. It's just something different when you, when you get on stage with a guitar and mm -hmm. it's just like, that's where you're supposed to be. You know, that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah. That's kind of, it's that I, I kind of figured that, but you know, some, some people are, they just can't be one-on-one -on -one anywhere, but you put them in front of 50,000 people and it's nothing. Yeah, so that's good for you. That's you. That's you. How many guitars do you have, Zach? Oh man, I don't even know. I would say that means a lot. At least ten or twelve. <laughs> <laughs> well, a dozen—that's really not too many. Uh, yeah, you're right. I've been yeah. to studios where there's fifty of them in the floor. So. <laughs> yeah, I had the um, the opportunity of being at Clint Black Studio which is part of it right off his home. And um, he was showing us around and there were like all these cabinets on the wall. And when he started opening them, there had to be a dozen guitars in each cabinet. Mm. And I'm like, why do you have so many guitars? And he said, because each one has its own unique sound. And if I'm looking for something, you know, a certain sound, I can go and just pull a different guitar or now I don't play guitar. I don't know, but that's what I was told. So, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I always like to compare it like when girls say something about like men having a lot of guitars. I'm like, well, how many purses do you have? There you go. Purses, <laughs> purses and shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guitars are my first pair of shoes. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. He's only got like one pair of jeans, a t shirt, a couple pairs of socks, but he's got a whole lot of guitars. <laughs> there you go. That's exactly right. Exactly. Exactly. So what else so do you? Oh, go ahead, Deb. No, I was just curious. You guys reside in North Carolina full time and just head back to Nashville to do recording and so forth. Yeah, that's worked um, so far. Now that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that we haven't, you know, had a lot of a lot of hours and sleepless nights. You know, making the trips mm -hmm. to, to Nashville. We've certainly taken a hard look numerous times at moving uh, mm -hmm. to Nashville, and and who knows, we may be taking Canton with us here in the next year or two yeah. to Nashville. So we'll be spending. Well, he's time. only about four hours from there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a little easier for oh, him. So maybe, yeah, 
Either that or we're going to have to go to Atlanta and so we can start working on this hip hop thing a little bit. <laughs> let's, go, let's do it. Let's I think you need to go each way. I think you need to do a little hip hop. And of course, Canton's doing a little bit of the country thing. Yeah, yeah. It sounds. I love that. So will that be, a, I'm looking as that hopefully we'll see a Christian hip hop combo. Is that what we're thinking? That would be nice. Just throw yeah. it out there. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some ideas uh, brewing. I'm sure Ken's got some going, and I've uh, I've already got one going too. Where and he was mentioning writing and stuff, so he's going to have to do some rap lyrics on his song. I, I feel like that, that that may be in the works on down the road. We'll see. You know, realistically speaking, that's not uncommon right now. If you listen to what's on country radio, you're hearing right. a lot of the spoken word. You're hearing a lot of a more or less like a rap. They're they're putting that into the music that we're listening to today. When you listen to a Sam Hunt or you listen to, mm -hmm. let's go back to even Cowboy Troy doing a hip hop. I mean, all yeah. that, you know, it's being mixed in with the music that we're listening to now. So it's not uncommon. So I think that's that's a that's a neat thing. And it's a new sound in the country. So. Oh yeah, it's been. Maybe, a, we, we, we love it. Maybe we need to work on a couple songs, bro. Like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> or something. Huh? Well, I, I will say, I don't think that. I don't know that that's ever been done in the Christian country, Donna. You're right. You're right. I think. You know? I think Skip is pushing us to do something, man. I think so. And I'd love to hear it. And I would definitely give it a spin. I'll tell you that much. You guys put something together. You send it to me here in the queues. And I'll make sure it gets on the air. And we'll we'll give it a spin and see what the listeners think about it. So. Oh, man. We can't thank you enough, Skip. And we appreciate it so much. And Deb. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're so happy to have you on with us here tonight. And hearing all about the new single, Selma Swamp. Mm -hmm. And when I first heard it, like I said in the beginning of the podcast, it, that, that sound, I love that sound. There's something about it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of a Charlie Daniels, or even though you're unique, you're doing your own thing. But just that like long haired country boy. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe it's just me, but I kind of got that feel and I love that music. It, it, not that you sound like Charlie Daniels. I'm not saying that at all, but yeah. I think I got that. When I heard that, I got that feel that it's that Southern swamp, you know, and, like long haired country boy type of oh, yeah. like pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the producers uh, on this song real quick were um, uh, were co-writer, of course, Brian Morgan, who didn't get to stick with us there for a little bit, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, but the producers of the song were, were Rick and Micah Swans Swansburg, and they're actually a father and son. And uh, you know, when we were, when we had written, Oh, uh -oh. he'll be back. Uh oh, he froze up. Yeah. Oh, Canton, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> I guess it's his time now. I don't, I don't know. What's he'll come back. I don't know if he can hear us or not. Hopefully he'll, uh, or they will uh, kind of go out and come back in. I don't know. Sometimes this mm -hmm. happens with the internet. Uh, maybe it's the comet. I don't know. No, we can't see the comet anymore, right? Did you guys see the comet? In, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't. I, just, I only heard about it. Yeah, we went mm -hmm. out two nights and tried to see it, but didn't work so well. So okay. anyway, but it's kind of a cool event. Yeah, because you know, we, we didn't yeah. want to come, you know, this way. Yeah. Now, Canton, tell me you're a dad of four, right? I am. I am. I have a uh, 15 year old girl, um, a eleven year old boy, eight year old, and a five year old. So my house, uh, they're doing very good right now by being quiet because yeah. my house is usually very, very noisy. Mm -hmm. Usually mine is too, and I have four kids, and they're all way older, right, Skip? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Let me they, tell you, they never quiet down. They don't. Never, oh, never. Love them. Good Damn kids, them. Very good kids. Uh, everybody's mm -hmm. into music, and um, you know, and you know, of course, my one son is he wants to rap, and another son wants to sing, and the baby he's just trying to find out what he wants to do. <laughs> Uh, and of course, my daughter is into fashion and stuff like that. That's they're, very they're good, cool. They're good kids. Um, God bless you, my friend. That is so awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank I, you. I, like I totally kid. see you as being the fun dad. Like, I could totally see you walking around, grabbing your kids, singing a tune, pounding on the counters, you know, going around doing your. I totally envision that. I am. I am. The okay. Dad. I am. The I thought. Dad. I'm also the dad that I'm embarrass everybody so, uh, well <laughs> of course wait till they become teenagers all of them are teenagers yeah, uh, yeah. especially the daughters to be dead yeah. yeah here comes yeah. back he's coming back so uh, but they're, they're awesome they're awesome we, we have a good time I, 
My, my daughter actually was, I, I, as soon as we started our church, I named her our youth pastor at 10 years old. So, oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, I always felt like family was uh, very important. I know when I was trying to log back on that Zach was saying that during the pandemic, he's been able to get with family and yes. really bond with his family because we can't travel as much. And that's kind of the same mm -hmm. that happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to uh, grab, you know, we, we've been able to sit at the table and have mm -hmm. dinner again, you know, mm -hmm. when, when mm -hmm. did that happen? You know, exactly. Um, but, and I, and I ban electronics. So listen, no iPods, iPhones, I anything uh, uh, at the table. Let's just sit down. And now it's awkward sometimes, but we don't know what to talk about because everything's online. But eventually, you know, we've, we've come around as a small family, young family. Uh, to start having conversations about whatever and, mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and learn to talk again like we used to do back in the day. Mm -hmm. Do you um, do you have the conversations with everything that's going on in the world nowadays? I know they got the Black Lives Movement. They've got mm -hmm. all that stuff going on. And it's like, yeah. it's just so disturbing sometimes, you know, yeah. what everybody's doing. Do you have those discussions with your kids? I do. I have discussions with, especially the 15-year-old uh, the and 11-year-old, yeah. just to talk about, uh, what what's going on? Um, you know, we believe that God protect protects us. We believe that mm -hmm. we have angels, mm -hmm. but we want to really tell them uh, what to pray for, what to look for, how to react, and and just you know, as a father, my my job is to bring comfort to my family to let you know that you know a lot of things are going on, but you're safe and you're okay. You know, and I don't mm -hmm. want you to be afraid. You know, as a little That's kid, excellent. you're an awesome mm -hmm. dad. You're an awesome dad to have that conversation. And I think a lot of parents need to do that. They need to sit down with their kids, especially the teenagers. And being a 15-year-old, uh, they're right there and they're so gullible. And, uh, you know, it depends who they're hanging out with and what they're doing. But they've got direction from a great dad like you that would make sure they, you know, understand what's going on. And I'm sure you're upfront and honest with them, too. So Yes, yeah, yeah, very, very, very blunt. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dad that's lucky that I had my mom and dad, my wife had her mom and dad. Mm -hmm. so we, 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 we're really lucky because um, in this generation, you're raised by either your mom or your dad. And, and, you know, some people don't know their dad and that whole dynamic, you know. And so I was blessed to have my mom and my dad in my life and my wife as well. Excellent. And so just, uh, you know, spreading that love. My, kid, my, my wife's mom actually moved from Dallas, Texas to atlanta to, you know five mm -hmm. minutes away so that she can be a grandmother to her kids so i'm lucky enough to have uh, uh my kids have their mother and their grandmother and her mother is is now living with her so they have a wow. great grandmother <laughs> that they know you know how, how cool is that you know to have yeah, a very mother that can tell you about the history of family so mm -hmm. um COVID, you know even though it's been very horrible uh, I'm still, you know, if there's a, if there's some type of goodness that came out of this, mm -hmm. I, I'm able to be closer to my family. You know, mm -hmm. my, my testimony is I don't want to be a, a public success and a private failure. There you mm -hmm. go. Exactly. Well, well said, well spoken. Listen mm -hmm. to that. Wow. And, you know, being in Atlanta, of course, that was a hot spot for all this stuff that was going on. I remember watching CNN and they were, you know, it was just crazy. I'm like, why, yeah. why? You know, just pulling my hair out. And, yeah. But, uh, you know, you're a good leader, great dad. And it sounds like you got an awesome family. And uh, Rodney and Zach are back. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having hey. me back. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome back. Did you, did you take a coffee break? Yeah, yeah, we did, we had to go do that and feed the dog, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I can just imagine what happened. What'd you do? I didn't do anything. What'd you do? No, I didn't. I didn't. Hey, oh, don't no. feed yourself. Zach didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> tell us, uh, Ronnie. What about your family? What you what you, you tell us about your family? Man, I'm gonna tell you what. I've got the absolute craziest, most awesome family in the world. Mm -hmm. Um. Zach's, I've got to say that, of course, I married Zach's sister. I know, I know. I was wondering how this was going to go. but You know, I've got to say something special about her. And of course, I mean it. And then uh, I've also been blessed with three daughters. i got three girls. Oh, my goodness. So do I. I have three daughters. Oh, wow. How about that? So Haley, Kaylee, and Bailey. 
Wow. Oh, boy. Haley. So Haley. when someone's in trouble, watch out. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know. You. You. Yeah. Child number one, you know, or yeah. older <laughs> one or something. H, you know, K. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, yeah, but man, they're, they're awesome. And, you know, we've got some pets around here too, man. So we, we love that. I, I've even uh, I've even got a pet pig now. So I bought my daughter a little pig and oh, wow. all this different stuff. So yeah. So it, and and the pig's a girl, and uh, I've got a, a black uh, lab, and she's a girl. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you know, if anything ever happens to any of my animals, <laughs> you can bet that the most masculine animal that could ever get inside of a home is coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I've got a yellow lab. So I know the, the labs are awesome. I do not have a pig. Uh, mm. I don't think that'd go over well in my house, but, um, but I well, it's not going over well in ours either, but, but you just thought you'd give it a try. What the heck? Anything to put a smile on your daughter's face. Exactly. Oh. That's what it's about. That's what it's mm -hmm. about. And you give them a little bit of responsibility by taking care of the, the pet as well. Correct. That's exactly right. Exactly. What about you, Zach? I am married, but I do not have kids, but I do have a dog. Okay. What kind of dog you got? I got a Husky. Cool. Husky. Good. The blue yeah. eyes. Yep. I love the blue eyes, man. Yeah. Husky's yeah. beautiful. My wife had one before we were uh, married. So. It's like, it's like struggle with getting hair out of your house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We vacuum every day here, even with the lab. So. Yeah. It's a little crazy, but we, we put up with it. So it's part of having a dog, loving it. It's part of the family. It is what it is. So. Yes, yeah, sir. You know what? Uh, mm -hmm. Swamp, I can't wait to uh, see what is next. I know this song is going to be on the radio for a while. And um, with all three of you, your voices and just clicking and making that song, it's going climb, to climb the charts. It's um, it's got every, It's got hit written all over it. And it's pretty cool. Like I said, in the beginning, you guys are no stranger to to music, recording in general, but to do something country, to release it to country radio and, and hooking up with Canton. I mean, wow. What more can mm -hmm. I say? That is fabulous. And uh, you guys become great friends. And when you call them and sing a song to them over the phone, I think that's pretty awesome. That's a sure sign that you're really close. <laughs> Either that or it's, you know, mine, it, I don't know. It'd be like one of those spam calls or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. You know, and, and another thing too, just kind of give you a heads up, Skip, and, and again, Deb, uh, I can't thank you enough. I know I've said it a million times, but we are deeply, deeply honored for everybody that has embraced the song, embraced the message. You know, we feel like that the song was truly God inspired and divinely timed. Uh, for such a time as this to bring about healing that needs to uh, take place. And we want to spread love as much as we possibly can, because that is the cure for hate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love it. We will truly, truly help you do that. Yeah. Now that, now that uh, again, for myself, meeting folks like yourself and introducing us uh, and our viewers to new music helps us get that out there for you. So We'll be following you and actually Skip probably would be asking you where we can uh, get a hold of all of your music and information, I assume, at your website. Okay, Deb, hold up. Where can you get a hold of uh, all your music? And <laughs> <laughs> I stole his thunder for a second. It just kind of flowed. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. But seriously, what, uh, the website, uh, I know that mm -hmm. if they go to YouTube and search Zach and Rodney, you're going to see the, the video of Selma Swamp along with Canton. And uh, I guess, what is your website, guys? Ours is Zach and Rodney Ministries, uh, dot com, and that's Zach with a C-H. And then the music and the song is is really everywhere now. I mean, it's Spotify, Pandora, iTunes. Uh, I mean, you, you name it, it's it's everywhere right now. And I did want to mention, Skip, and I'll uh, let the folks know on your show here, that not only do we have the music video, but here in the next little bit, you're going to actually see a short film of Sour Swamp coming out it's about eight to nine minutes long where you actually see uh canton and zach and myself doing some dialogue some acting and things like that to go along with the music video it's a really really cool thing that's going to be coming out here in the next month or so but that that'll be on youtube but go ahead canton tell them about where they can find all your music too yep um i'm, I'm on spotify uh, apple music as well 
Um, the oh, website is cantonjones.net. Um, I'm on Instagram, T H E uh, Canton Jones, V Canton Jones. Um, and you know, anybody need us, just hit us up. We'd love to be of service to you. You know, that's awesome. And uh, again, thank you for joining us tonight. I want our listeners, our viewers to check out Cinema Swamp. Keep an eye out for the, the video that's coming out here in a month or so. And uh, I can't I can't stress enough that uh, if you're listening to this, you're watching this, please go online. Check these guys mm -hmm. out. You've got Canton, uh, a Grammy Award nominee, and he does, you know, his music style and so in depth and then of course zach and rodney being a uh, christian artist as well as now kind of flipping it into the country type of thing and hooking up with canton i mean this is just so unique and so cool um wow i just can't i can't say that enough that we need to have people check you out so mm -hmm. awesome Appreciate it. thank so you much. for joining us you guys we really really, really enjoyed you. it canton god bless you keep doing all of you just keep doing what mm -hmm. you're doing so respect each and every one of you for what you do and what you represent. And the music, again, is awesome. And stay safe mm -hmm. during this uh, quarantine for however long it lasts. I don't know. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you, Skip. Miss Deb, thank you guys for having us. You're Thanks. welcome. Thanks, guys. You're Peace. welcome. Love you, man. Love you all, man. Appreciate you. Peace, everybody. Take See care. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Here we go.